iPhone 15 Pro gets a major performance upgrade from the A17 Pro chip. Apple have been slowly building up their gaming presence with the recent success of Apple Arcade in the growing subscription space, but the console gaming market has never been their target. Or has it? With the newly announced iPhone 15 Pro, have they just picked Nintendo and Microsoft's pocket? Now, Apple's reveal of the latest top-tier iPhone 15 Pro came last week with a launch this week, sporting the most powerful mobile sock, causing comparisons to the Steam Deck and beyond. The feature set on offer here is impressive, even for current generation consoles and PC. The device itself offers a HDR 120Hz screen, in the Pro mode at least, resolution reconstruction via hardware and software in metal effects, and hardware accelerated ray tracing, meaning it can run native current generation games with ray tracing such as Resident Evil Village and Resident Evil 4 Remake, and a return to its roots AC Mirage early next year. The specs are almost as high as the price though, costing more than any current generation console and even decent PC specifications. The power of the Apple brand and premium hardware within. One big change is the phone uses a standard USB-C port and will have AV out options via this to 4K HDMI devices, meaning it can do what the Switch and Steam Deck does with a handheld and docked mode. The A17 Pro allows us to push the quality of the game with improved resolution, more dynamic lightings, and even more fire and weather effects, making the game more real. Now the phone is very powerful, built on an impressive 3 nanometer TSMC node delivering a 6 core CPU with 2 power cores and 4 eco cores, meaning these will shift between high demand apps such as games and then lower demands of videos, OS etc. But early benchmarks have cropped up on Geekbench with us seeing the claimed 10% increase over the previous A16 bested by 16 and 13% respectively for single and multi core. It hits a high of 3.78 gigahertz and is paired with 8 gigabytes of ram two gigabytes more than the 14 which is vital but the cpu seems little more on paper than the standard a16 pro moved over to this new nanometer but it's still very powerful and already has shown that it has gains over the previous hardware the chip itself packs 19 billion transistors, which is a staggering 24% more than even the Xbox Series X 7 nanometer at 15.3 billion. But that does not mean it's close to that power level. Power draw, thermals and more are far lower for starters, but it does pack many of the same features. Full hardware accelerated ray tracing is included, mesh shading support, AV1 decoding for high quality video files, ProRes capture to your device of choice, a new 6 core GPU which should offer up 20% increased in performance. In addition to the new hardware features, paired with a 16 core neural engine, it can run games with high visual settings and upscaling to high resolutions with 4K outputs via that USB-C port to your display of choice. A Bluetooth controller would be recommended though to get the best out of the games it will be offering close to launch and beyond if touchscreen controls are not your thing. iPhone is powered by high performance and power efficient Apple Silicon. Features advanced HDR displays, supports variable refresh rates, and is compatible with the most advanced game controllers. The machine learning increases here with Apple's own deep learning hardware and algorithms. The scope and abilities of the phone start strong and will only increase. Now, this is likely a core feature within the Metal API that is shared across this and the Mac Pro and new iPads to come and will really help attract more developers to add these devices and potentially grow into a huge market of multi-platform plans. The rate at which this has improved has been vast, with it now hitting up to 35 trillion ops per second and has been open for third parties to use for a while now via Apple's machine learning SDK. And this does offer some big potential in the near future, I'm sure. On the new iPhone 15 Pro, Honkai Sario has never looked better. Now, as imposing as this rapid progress Apple have delivered is with each new generation, the power and battery use will be vital for the possibilities that this new phone can achieve as a viable modern mobile gaming device. 
with it being leagues ahead of the Switch and closer to the Xbox Series S. It certainly has been exciting to see just how the feature set of this phone comes to current generation console and PC technology. Nvidia Alight Tensor Cores, check. Hardware Accelerated Image Reconstruction, a la DLSS, check. Hardware Accelerated Ray Tracing, check. It even has some of the benefits of consoles with a lower level API and focused on a dedicated platform and bespoke operating system. Like the Switch, it runs with a wrist-based CPU ideal for games, and just like Nintendo's SDK, the entire Apple SDK will aid the porting process from x86 to ARM-based compilers, something that big games from Capcom, Ubisoft and Sega have already demonstrated. Throw in a gaming subscription service, cloud streaming and local high-end gaming with a growing number of third-party studios making games for it, with even the likes of Sega's AM2 hero Yu Suzuki releasing his spiritual Space Harrier successor on the Apple Arcade store from the first. The growing selection of games just got a big boost of potential with this new hardware, meaning we could see full-blown open-world games such as GTA V, expansive RPGs in The Witcher 3, and even retro path trace classics in a modern skin a la Quake 2 and Doom. The iPhone 15 Pro does offer everything needed of a modern game engine, however, we need to ensure some balance is maintained in the real world results and limits. As mentioned, mobile gaming is always power and thermal constrained, and being passively cooled means the thermals are a limiting factor here, significantly. Based on the 20% increase in GPU cores from 5 to 6, this likely means the clocks of the GPU will not change significantly at all from the A16's 1368 MHz. This still offers over 2 teraflops of performance, which puts it, on paper at least, above the Steam Deck. The other factor to consider is bandwidth, which is slightly lower than the Steam Deck. The previous A16 chip using LPDDR5 is likely going to shift up with the A17 Pro here using LPDDR5X. It uses less power and heat with increased speeds of 8.5 gigabits per second, which means this could jump up 32% from 51 to 68 gigabytes per second, which means resolution and frame rate targets need to be kept in check. And in fact, we've already seen this. The latest RE Village hands-off demo that IGN saw, for example, which had ray tracing FX on, did use upscaling and ran at 30 FPS. Something has to give. But the concept of running a current generation ray trace title on your phone at 30 FPS rather than 60 is nothing short of a remarkable leap in mobile possibilities and means this puts the iPhone 15 Pro squarely in the space of the Switch and Steam Deck and backed up with Apple Arcade's growing suite of games, it means many more companies will look at making ports over to the new device and the scope they can pick from would be far larger than even the Switch could hope for. Although, all bets are off with a potential new Switch on the horizon next year. The App Store and Apple Arcade have revolutionized game distribution and iPhone and iOS have a fantastic game developer community. A17 Pro takes this incredible platform even further. So with expectations tempered but options left on the table, Apple have certainly put forward a tantalizing new platform for gamers and developers to be intrigued by. The feature set and power packed into the device, alongside the well-oiled and well-supported OS, API and SDKs from Apple, will make this an attractive option for many teams looking to expand their market, and this will only get bigger with the new Macs and iPads to come, which will use the same A17 Pro chip. The limits of a touchscreen will also combine gaming on the go to certain styles of games and play, but with the growing range of phone oriented controllers, such as the Backbone One, means that even in this form, full console and PC style gaming is possible right from day one. Add in the option to pair your Xbox or DualSense controller and plug it into your 4K TV means this could be the future of gaming that finally merges the phone with your home media center. To put into perspective, the scope of games that could come to this device range from recent huge hits such as Baldur's Gate 3, Elden Ring, Dead Space, Hogwarts Legacy and even Red Dead Redemption and beyond all being within the realms of possibilities. Even classic Nintendo inspired hits like Tunic would fit perfectly on the phone format and could even run at higher resolutions and 60 frames per second. 
The caveat will always be limitations on the device means that 30 FPS for high-end games is always going to be the area and upscaling impacts and resolution quality such as we see with the Switch and Steam Deck will always be a factor on a 4K screen. And this is where the future really lies. The Switch has become the leader in the console quality mobile gaming space. But Steam Deck, the ROG and now the iPhone 15 Pro are more than nipping at its heels. The future for the sea of mobile gaming is looking to grow very rapidly this year and the potential for Apple to make a big splash is impossible to ignore. But you can find out how big that actually is with our IGN review coming very soon. <gasps> And that's it for another quick preview of technology, phones, and all things gaming related to come. If you like what we do here on IGN Performance Reviews, then keep it IGN, and we'll catch you on the next one. Whoa, these graphics bring out every beautiful, disgusting detail.